Hello everyone, and welcome. Today we're going to be reading a book called Zen Shorts by John J. Muth. I'm going to be keeping the video slow and chill. This is a children's book, but this is not a children's channel. So you should leave if you thought you were here for a children's channel. Um, that said, um, I've never read this book before, and um, we're going to be keeping everything within this video very PG, very child-friendly, no improper words, or themes, just the contents of the book. And so here we have this panda with a beautiful little umbrella, some cherry blossom trees. And here we have someone sort of pressed up against this big blue door, a couple of his stuffed animals, little toy, portrait of presumably his parents, some blue trimming on the walls. Michael, there's a bear outside, said Carl. A what? called Michael. So presumably this is Carl. We haven't seen Michael yet. A bear. He's really big, and he's in the backyard. What's he doing? Michael asked. He's sitting. He has an umbrella, said Carl, and Carl is looking out the window. And Michael sort of pokes his head into the room, and he asks, an umbrella? And we can see Carl looking out at this bear. By the time the boys got outside, their sister, Addie, was already talking with him. So, this is Addie, and you can see this is the bear, and he has an umbrella and it's raining. I'm sorry for arriving unannounced, said the bear. The wind carried my umbrella all the way from my backyard to your backyard. I thought I would retrieve it before it became a nuisance. He spoke with a slight panda accent. Michael introduced himself. Then Addie introduced Carl because Carl was shy around bears he didn't know. And you can see he, Carl was shy here, and now he's less shy, and he's sort of playing with the rain. And the panda has his umbrella outstretched to cover them. And this is how Addie, Michael, and Carl met Stillwater. The next day, Addie went to have tea with Stillwater. And so we can see Addie climbing this mountain with something. And then here's Addie uh, with a bamboo plant at Stillwater's house. Hello? Addie said as she stepped inside. Come in, come in, a faraway voice called. She heard the voice say, Oh, yes, come out, come out. Stillwater was in the backyard. He was in a tent, and we can see Stillwater in this tent. This is a birthday present for my Uncle Rye, Stillwater said. He always gives presents on his birthday to celebrate the day he was born. I like it so much that I'm not staying in my house right now. Stillwater invited Addie to sit with him. So Addie comes into the tent, and as you can see, she takes her shoes off, which is very respectful, and she gives Stillwater this, what actually is a cake, turns out, a cake with a bamboo piece in it. And pandas love bamboo. You brought me some cake, 
said Stillwater. That was very nice of you. Is it your birthday? he asked. No, said Addie. It's not mine either, said Stillwater. But let me give you a gift for my uncle's birthday. I will tell you a story. Uncle Rye and the Moon My Uncle Rye lived alone in a small house up in the hills. He didn't own many things. He lived a simple life. One evening he discovered he had a visitor. A robber had broken into the house and was rummaging through my uncle's few belongings. The robber didn't notice Uncle Rye, and when my uncle said, Hello, the robber was so startled, he almost fell down. And we can see here, the robber is this raccoon who is climbing in through the window, and it's nighttime. And here's Uncle Rye in a nightgown or some sort of um, robe. My uncle smiled at the robber and shook his hand. Welcome, welcome. How nice of you to visit. The robber opened his mouth to speak, but he couldn't think of anything to say. Because Rye never lets anyone leave empty-handed, he looked around the tiny hut for a gift for the robber, but there was nothing to give. The robber began to back toward the door. He wanted to leave. At last, Uncle Rye knew what to do. He took off his only robe, which was old and tattered. Here, he said, please take this. See, Uncle Rye is greeting this robber. And here we have a sort of mountain landscape, a stylized version of it, with the robber here in the house. The robber thought my uncle was crazy. He took the robe, dashed out the door, and escaped into the night. We can see here he is escaping. My uncle sat and looked at the moon, its silvery light spilling over the mountains, making all things quietly beautiful. Poor man, lamented my uncle. All I had to give him was my tattered robe. If only I could have given him this wonderful moon. Your uncle sounds nice, said Addie. I don't think I could have given away my only robe. I know how that is, said Stillwater, but there is always the moon, and here we see them painting each other. That was a good story, said Addie. Thank you, said Stillwater. And this is good cake. Thanks, said Addie. I made it myself, and here they are eating the cake and a couple of their paintings they've drawn. The next day, Michael went to see Stillwater. Here I am, Stillwater called from the tree. Can I come up? asked Michael. If you are careful, said Stillwater. Here's Michael. Stillwater up in this tree. What if we could fly, said Michael. We could cast shadows on clouds, said Stillwater. But what if we fell? said Michael. If we fell, we might break something, said Stillwater. That would be bad, said Michael. Maybe, said Stillwater. Maybe, asked Michael. And here they are talking in this tree. And Stillwater is telling another story now. The farmer's luck there once was an old farmer who had worked his crops for many years. One day, his horse ran away. Upon hearing the news, his neighbor came to visit. Such bad luck, they said sympathetically. Maybe, the farmer replied. The next morning the horse returned, bringing with it two other wild horses. Such good luck, the neighbors exclaimed. Maybe, the farmer replied. The following day, his son tried to ride one of the untamed horses. 
was thrown off and broke his leg. Again, the neighbors came to offer their sympathy on his misfortune. Such bad luck, they said. Maybe, answered the farmer. As we can see here, the story sort of unfolds. The horse runs away. And we have a bunny eating carrots. And then the horse brings back two wild horses. And here, here's the son trying to ride this untamed horse. The day after that, military officials came to the village to draft young men into the army to fight in a war. Seeing that the son's leg was broken, they passed him by. Such good luck, cried the neighbors. Maybe, said the farmer. I get it, said Michael. Maybe good luck and bad luck are all mixed up. You never know what will happen next. Yes, Stillwater agreed. You never know. And here we see Michael sitting on Stillwater's belly. The day after that, Carl went to visit Stillwater. Here's Carl and Stillwater. Michael said, I couldn't bring over our stuff to go swimming. I'm mad at Michael. He's always telling me what to do. So I brought everything. Hmm, said Stillwater. It's a little pool. I don't know if all those things will fit. Let's see, Carl said. Let's see, said Stillwater. Stillwater looked at the pool. The things can go swimming, but we can't, he said. I brought too much stuff, said Carl. That's okay, said Stillwater. I'll help you carry it home later. So, you can see, Carl's pretty upset here. They're both in uh, their swimming trunks. Why does Michael always have to tell me what to do? Carl said. And Carl's sort of standing on still water here. If he were here, I would climb up really high. And I would jump on him like this, and he jumps on still water. And I would do a big smash like this. And he jumps into the pool. Later, Carl and Stillwater had tea. You can see Carl here, sitting on a rock with a teacup. And Stillwater is pouring tea from this teapot while kneeling down on the grass. Carl, said Stillwater, he spent the whole day being angry with Michael. Did you notice how much fun we had? Carl watched the steam rise from his cup. I'm sorry I brought all this stuff, Carl said. You don't need to be sorry, said Stillwater. Right now, you need to carry. Hold on tight, and I will tell you a story. And so Stillwater begins telling Carl a story. A heavy load. Two traveling monks reached a town where there was a young woman waiting to step out of her sedan chair. The rains had made deep puddles, and she couldn't step across without spoiling her silken robes. She stood there, looking very cross and impatient. She was scolding her attendants. They had nowhere to place the packages they held for her, so they couldn't help her across the puddle. And you can see here, she's sitting in this sedan chair that they're carrying. And they have these packages in the other hand. And there's this puddle around them, so they can't place any anything down. So they can't help her down. The younger monk noticed the woman, said nothing, and walked by. The older monk quickly picked her up and put her on his back transported her across the water, and put her down on the other side. She didn't thank the older monk. She just shoved him out of the way and departed. You can see here's the younger monk here, and here's the older monk here. As they continued on their way, the young monk was brooding and preoccupied. 
After several hours, unable to hold his silence, he spoke out. That woman back there was very selfish and rude, but you picked her up on your back and carried her. Then she didn't even thank you. See so here they're walking. And, and here they are talking face to face. And he has taken off his hat. I set the woman down hours ago, the old monk replied. Why are you still carrying her? And here we are back with still water and Carl. Do you think you have carried it long enough? asked Stillwater. Yes, said Carl. Good, said Stillwater. And this is how Addie, Michael, Carl, and Stillwater became friends. We can see Stillwater is placing Carl back in his room. We have Addie here painting. We have Michael with his paper airplane. And there you go, that is Zen Shorts. Um, we do have this author's note that I will also read. Author's note. What is Zen? Zen is a Japanese word that simply means meditation. In Zen, the teachings of the Buddha have always been passed down from teacher to student. The Buddha's method of meditation was to sit very still yet remain completely alert, allowing first one thought and then another to rise and pass away, holding on to none of them. When you look into a pool of water, if the water is still, you can see the moon reflected. If the water is agitated, the moon is fragmented and scattered. It is harder to see the true moon. Our minds are like that. When our minds are agitated, we cannot see the true world. Stillwater's name came from this. His character is based partly on the Zen artist, teacher, Sengai Gibbon, from 1750 to 1838, whose drawings were used as gentle teaching tools. He was known for his humor and unorthodox teaching style. Uncle Rai is based on Ryokin Taigu from 1758 to 1831. He was one of Japan's best loved poets. Zen shorts are short meditations, ideas to puzzle over, tools which hone our ability to act with intuition. They have no goal, but they often challenge us to re-examine our habits, desires, concepts, and fears. The stories Uncle Ryan the Moon and A Heavy Load come from Zen Buddhist literature, which has been passed along for centuries. The story of the farmer's luck has roots going back to Taoism, which is several thousand years old. There are many versions of these stories, and I have chosen the ones that I feel speak best to the youngest audience. Thank you for watching.